You did it. Let's hear it again for Aaliyah Sharice. <clears throat> thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Marty, I'm not sure who's responsible for weather in this town, but thank you for that as well. It is a day the Lord made, as you said. Thank you, Marty, for kicking things off for us. We've had a lot of good conversations since you became mayor, including earlier today. And I know we share an ironclad commitment to seeing Atlantic City become the city we know it can be, diverse and strong, not just a good place to visit, but a great place to call home. So to you and the members of council, I saw Colleen and others here. Hats off to you and thank you for everything you do. <clears throat> and thank you, Aaliyah Sharice, for putting into words what today truly means for the people of Atlantic City. I said you, put, you made this tangible. You made it real. And thank you for that. It's very easy for those of us at an event like this to forget to look past the construction and the jobs to the direct impact a project has on a community, on a family, on an individual, and not so today. And again, thank you for that. I cannot put it more clearly. This is a city that has so much going on and so much promise. And I am incredibly honored to be with a crew of folks today who not only share in this view, but are working every day to keep good things moving forward. Let me acknowledge, if I may, a few of them. Lieutenant Governor, Commissioner of the Department of Community Affairs, Sheila Y. Oliver. <clears throat> If Sheila turns around, you will see that she has taken my sunglasses and put them on today. I love that. Senate President Steve Sweeney. Speaker of the General Assembly, Craig Coughlin. CRDA Chair Mo Butler. CRDA Executive Director Matt Doherty. And by the way, Matt, you did so much legwork, you and your team, to make today possible. So God bless you to you and your colleagues, Mo, to you and your fellow board members. Is Doug Fisher with us? Doug, in the back. How are you, man? Secretary of Agriculture, Doug Fisher. And I might add, Doug, you previously had a 30-year career in the supermarket industry, so you know from whence we're talking about today. Great to have you. The man who's perhaps the main reason why we're here today, he's here with many of his colleagues, Village Supermarkets Executive Vice President and dear friend, Bill Sumas. Bill? I know we got at least County Commissioners Karen Fitzpatrick, D. Ernie Corsi, Anjum Zia, so to the commissioners, to First Lady Tammy Murphy right before me. Senator-elect Vince Palestine. I, I lost Vince. I don't know where he went, but there you go, right in front of me, Vince. Hats off to you. Kaleem, if you were any closer to me, you'd be behind me, as Groucho Marx once said. And looking out, I could go on and on, but I also want to single out Joe Gingoli and the team from the Hard Rock. Who have already committed to bringing a lot of their business to this store once it's completed. And that's a great thing to hear because it signals that those who are playing a big role in this city's revitalization are going to keep paying it forward. Joe, thank you to you and Jack and the rest of the team. I also want to acknowledge, <clears throat> excuse me, our brothers and sisters in labor, Mike Laughlin, AC Building Trades, President of USCW Local 152, Brian String. I saw Billy Sproul here from the Carpenters, uh, among others. Uh, our brothers and sisters from IBEW 351 are here, I know. This supermarket will be built union and staffed union. This means good pay and good benefits for everyone involved in this project. Higher education is in the house. Harvey Kesselman, please call me Harvey Stockton. Its president is in the house. Harvey, God bless you, Doc. More on Jim Johnson in a minute. Since 2006, as, uh, as Aaliyah said, and reminded us when Atlantic City's only true supermarket, the IGA at Renaissance Plaza on Atlantic Avenue closed its doors. This city and its residents have gone without a full service supermarket of their own. The closing of the IGA all but finalized Atlantic City's designation as a food desert. Think about that folks, for 15 years, 
Atlantic City's families' options have been limited to bodegas and small corner markets offering few healthy and affordable options. Being able to make a single trip to a single local store, something that many of us take for granted will no longer be a luxury denied to the residents of Atlantic City. Getting this supermarket built is something that I take great pride in because it's going to mean so much to this community. And I know so many here join me in that pride. It is going to mean consistent access to healthy foods, especially fresh fruits and vegetables, and not merely convenience foods pumped full of preservatives, which I happen to also like, I have to say. <laughs> this is not an either or day, it's an and both. It is going to mean consistent access to brand name products, not just off-brand discount goods. It's going to mean jobs for Atlantic City's residents, both in the construction phase and in the day-to-day -day store operations. It's going to mean no longer having to head to Ventnor or Brigantine or to Village Supermarkets, other stores in Absecon, Egg Harper, Egg Harbor, Galloway or Summers Point just to visit a supermarket. Everything families will need will be right here in a central in-city location directly accessible by public transportation, ride-sharing applications, and even delivery services. It means we're finally going to water this food desert. There's a lot going on out here, Marty. I'm not sure. I hope that's probably a good sign. Ending Atlantic City's designation as a food desert has been personally important to me, but to many folks here, as I know it has been for the lieutenant governor, the mayor, members of the legislature, especially the speaker and Senate president. To that end, this groundbreaking is a wonderful addition to the steps we've taken together to tackle food insecurity throughout our state. Now, surely there are some cynics who are going to wonder what all this hoopla is about. It's just a supermarket, right? Well, that's an easy thing to say when you've never lived in a food desert. This ShopRite bill is going to play a central role in rebuilding community life. It means residents will know they are no longer afterthoughts. It means a new hub for community life and economic benefits. In short, this store means feeding both bodies and spirits. And with that comes both an improving quality of life for those who have fought and stayed and an attractive quality of life for those who may look to join Atlantic City's civic family. Now to Jim. These are critical aspects, as Marty referred to, which the 2018 report of Special Counsel for Atlantic City and dear friend Jim Johnson highlighted as necessary for this community to stand firmly again on its own two feet after years of teetering in the wake of the Great Recession and the economic devastation it wrought on this city. And today, this also means having to overcome the impacts of the pandemic too. This community, this county, this state owes an enormous debt of gratitude to Jim Johnson. Jim. And I want to acknowledge something that Tammy reminded me of this morning. In the state's quest to solve the awful maternal and infant mortality crisis, particularly across racial lines, part of their strategic plan included ending food deserts in the state of New Jersey. We're doing that right here in Atlantic City. Hats off to you, Tammy. And Doug, to that end, in terms of all of what we're dealing with, I'm also pleased that the Department of Agriculture is today announcing a further investment of $10 million in food banks across our state to target food insecurity elsewhere. Congratulations and thank you. And we, we had a food insecurity crisis before this pandemic, but we know it has become acute, Kaleem, right, uh, in food banks up and down the state, particularly over the past 20 months. I could go on and on about the importance of this new shop, right, and build to you and your family and team. Thank you. And this investment in community-based food security, but I think it's important to let others help tell this story. So with that, please help me welcome my partner in government, the Commissioner of the Department of Community Affairs, Atlantic City's partner in renewal, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Y. Oliver.